Joe, good morning. Hey, good morning, Don. How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Good. Um, let me just state the obvious. It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Way too long. <laughs> yeah, I know. I can't. I can't remember the last time I saw you. I know um, maybe in 1983, that summer, uh, or 82, I saw you coaching the, the team. I remember Greg Stolen was playing shortstop. It might have been in 82 or 83, because I was home in Scobie that, later that summer. Um, but I don't remember talking to you. So, I, I mean, I think the last time I remember seeing you was in 79. Um, you know, when we played in Butte at, at the end of the year and, you know, played in the State A tournament. Do you remember seeing us seeing each other after that? I don't. Boy, I sure don't either, Joe. Yeah. And my memory isn't the best, but uh, nope, I, I sure don't. Yeah, well, yeah, neither is mine, you know, but uh, uh, <laughs> we'll do our best today to, to talk about old times. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it because I'm... Um, you know, I, I don't know your backstory, Don, um, so to speak. You know, I, you know, I, I know that you know when, you, of course, I played against you when you were coaching in Wolf Point, and and then, um, you know, of course, when you when you coached at Scobie as the assistant coach and stuff. But I'm I'm really kind of uh, excited to learn about kind of your story with baseball going back. So, um, you know, I sent you some questions, but you know, I normally start mm -hmm. these off with, uh, you know, when did you start playing baseball? When, um, you know, probably, of course, we all started in Little League. And, and where was that? And do you remember your first coaches and mentors that kind of introduced you to the game? Um, well, I was born in Scobie, but moved to Wolf Point when I was three. My dad got a job down there, uh -huh. and uh, I had always always been interested in baseball. So, uh, organizationally wise, uh, I started playing little league, you know, at eight in Wool Point. Then we had probably eight through twelve, four years of little league there, and uh, we had just a, a small. I can't remember for sure. There was either four or six little league teams, and so we all played each other. Yes, yeah. and. Uh, and then from Little League, moved on to Babe Ruth, played three years at Babe Ruth. Um, uh, had different coaches. Uh, well, my first Little League coach, I believe, was Jerome Lindorf, and he was a, a Wolf Point uh, graduate. And I think when he, his summers, uh, he, he would come back from college and, and he would coach Little League, or at least he did for two or three years. Mm -hmm. And he's probably the first coach I remember. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and he came from a baseball family as well, so he actually related to my wife because um, mm -hmm. she was a Lindorf also. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, in Babe Ruth, uh, gosh, I think I had two or three different coaches in Babe Ruth. Um, don't remember for sure. I think one was Wilbur Johnson. He was a, a Wolf Point farmer and a real mm -hmm. baseball enthusiast. Mm -hmm. Um I don't remember. I know I had a couple other coaches too, and and uh, another another relative of my wife coached us in the Babe Ruth All Stars when I was fifteen, mm -hmm. and so that was that was fun. Mm -hmm. And then I moved on. I did play three years of Legion for Wolf Point. Um, I when I was sixteen, our coach was a guy by the name of Dick Wilson, mm -hmm. and Dick was an MDU. Uh, person, but he had also he had an interesting baseball history. Uh, I believe he he got a tryout with the Cardinals, St. Louis Cardinals, yeah. at shortstop. And uh, I don't know what happened after that. If life got in the way and he had a family or whatever, but he was a terrific player and, and a good coach. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I think Charlie Mueller coached us uh, our my second and third year when I was seventeen and eighteen. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as Legion goes. And we had those two years, we had, we had really good, really good teams mm -hmm. and good kids. We had some popular kids playing with us who were really good. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, but anyway, as, as luck would have it, I don't believe our birth certificates were sent in. And so we didn't qualify for any tournaments, even though we were first in the league. 
would that have been like um, sixty seven, maybe? What what year? Sixty seven, sixty eight. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I graduated in sixty eight. Yeah, because I remember, you know, sixty seven. So you would have played against the Scobie teams, Philadet, um, Dick Puckett, yep. that bunch. Um, that I've been. You've probably heard some interviews I've been doing with them. Yeah. So yep, yeah, I did. Sure yeah. Go ahead, Don. Sorry. No, that's uh, no. You're right. Those are those are some of the some of the kids we played against, and uh, and there was lots of good teams. You know, back then, there, I don't think anything was a runaway. But uh, uh, Glasgow was pretty good at that time. Um, I don't remember. Well, we'd go to Mile City. We'd always play Mile City back then. They were pretty good. Um, and but my memory, like I said, isn't isn't really isn't really good. But we, we had some good teams. We had a lot of fun and, and uh, um, got to meet a lot of a lot of people. And and the Scobie and Wolf Point kids, you know, we got along pretty well back then, and that continued for as long as I can remember. Yeah, me too. I, I know um, when I played in 76 as a 15-year-old, um, you know, we'll talk about that team a little later, but um, I was, I just noticed how the 18-year-olds, they were just on both teams. Uh, like when they were on the field, they would just talk like they were the best of friends. It was just amazing. And then, you know, we ended up playing for the state championship, but everyone was just sure. get really got along well there was no certainly no bad blood at all between the two teams and i just i did notice that i just did notice that how how well they got along so um mm -hmm. when what positions did you play uh when you played don in in legion i was pr pretty much a second baseman played mm -hmm. that uh 90% of the time or or more mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. uh, played a little bit outfield when needed, and uh, if there was some uh, mop-up duty, I wasn't a good pitcher, but I did pitch in a few games. Uh, maybe to, either we were getting beat bad or we were way ahead, so they could they could mm -hmm. bring somebody in who couldn't throw very hard but threw a mm -hmm. lot of crap. So <laughs> that would have been me. <laughs> uh, well, I know that everyone I interview is so humble, but I'm sure it wasn't quite that way, Don. Um, in, <laughs> in 1965. Wolf Point won the state championship at a really powerful team. Now, would that have been your 15-year-old year in Babe Ruth, or were you on that 65 team? No, nope, I was not. You know, they were good. They mm -hmm. had a lot of older kids, big kids, a lot of kids yeah. that played all sports. You know, they were good basketball, football, baseball. Uh, yeah, those mm -hmm. were big. Mm -hmm. I don't remember some, you know, most of the kids, but I can remember a couple. There was Tony Welsenbach who ended up playing football for the Cats, yep. and also played in the Canadian Football League for a couple of years. Wow. Um, Henry Hamill was one of those. Barry Karakawa, um, gosh, uh, they were just they were they had some really good teams. Big yeah. kids, hard throwing kids. And yeah. I think there might have been a Van Atta playing from Circle on that team too. With the Van Atta's it's, it's very possible. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we had, I know that we I mean, we talked about that team with Phil at Dad, and he said they were men among boys. I know that, you know, Tony Wetzelbach, yep. those players were just, got some pictures of them. They're just uh, imposing <laughs> figures, for sure. <laughs> yep. well, you play in the Canadian yep. Football League, you got to be pretty, pretty good, so... Now about your coaching career, yeah. Don. So, um, when did your coaching career start at any level, and where? Do you remember that? Uh, yep, I sure do. Um, actually, it was 1975. Uh, I was back home uh, through with school and kind of looking for a job, and so I ended up uh, uh, in Wolf Point. I got a job there, and then Harvey Longauger was coaching the Wolf Point team and he was one of my best friends I'm, he's a year younger than I am he graduated in 69 but uh, uh, he was a, a really good multi-sport athlete and uh, so I became his assistant in 75 and uh, we had you know a lot of the kids that I ended up having in 76 uh, were on that team so I think we ended up third in the state that year we we uh, didn't play as well as we thought we should have but anyway that was uh, we had a great year ended up third in the state that year 
And then Harvey moved on. He moved out to Shepherd to coach basketball out there and teach school. And so uh, they offered me the job in 76, and and I took it. And uh, I had an assistant coach who was actually Dennis Lindorf's oldest brother was my assistant. His name was Don Lindorf. And mm-hmm. so we we inherited a good team and, and uh, got to work on it. And, and things just didn't quite work out the, the end of the year <laughs> due, due to some uh, unforeseen circumstances that you you know about it. <laughs> yeah, I was there. Um, do you want to talk about that at all, or? <laughs> oh, oh, sure. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we we played good baseball all year, and uh, we'd actually gone down to Billings and played the. We went on a road trip and played the Scarlets twice. Uh, I threw Denny the first game down there, Dennis Lindorf, mm-hmm. and a little bit of poor coaching on my part. You know, Dennis threw pretty hard, and he had a nasty curveball. Yes, he did. But we got a little fastball heavy, and, and the Scarlet hitters were hitting it off the wall <laughs> mm-hmm. down there. Mm-hmm. So I figured it out about after the second inning, and we were down five zip already, and uh, we he started mixing it up a little more, and we ended up losing five to one. He shut them down the rest of the way. And then in the second game, uh, I started my little left-hander, uh, Oh, Jerry Moran. In fact, yeah. he's the kid that would have pitched the final championship game in, in yeah. the state tournament. But yeah. uh, he shut the Scarlets totally down, uh, and we won that game three to one. Wow. And uh, so that was that was kind of the the highlight of the summer as far as going down there and then beating them. I think we played Miles City on the way and uh, beat them twice. And I think we played somebody coming back. I don't remember who right now but uh anyway that was kind of the 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 highlight of the summer before the state tournament and then obviously when we got there and and, uh we end up in the championship game against scoby and and jerry was supposed to pitch that last game and then as it turned out he broke his finger and as as i would be informed in doc's room uh (laughs) uh, the next morning (laughs) so and that was another time where the kids were pretty much all together, you know, uh, having a little fun before the championship game, mm-hmm. and uh, just ran into ran into some people who apparently didn't like some of the kids, or at least some of my kids. And anyway, Jerry Jerry had a tough time. One of the key guys, I think he got hit in the back or the back of the head by a can or a bottle or something, and. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was the straw that broke his back. He had to take a swing at the guy, and I think he connected, but broke his little finger at the same time. So, so then we had to scramble the next day, and that didn't turn out so good. <laughs> yeah, that was quite a quite a deal. I mean, you know, John and I were playing out there as fifteen year olds. Kip Harshark was playing as a fifteen year old. Yep. I'm sure, you know, he started as fifteen year old for Wolf Point. And there were several of us younger kids on the team, and that was that was quite a memorable uh, tournament. Um, you know, a, a, a bizarre turn of events there at the end. And I mean, I know it was awful to lose, Don. I can't imagine, you know, the way you lost. <laughs> but it was. I'll tell you what. Those were two great games. Those two. You know, when Greg. Oh. I'm sure you remember the first. You know, the first playoff game, where it was. You know, Greg Feld was down to his we were down to our last strike um in the play in yeah. game and um he hit a soft liner down there were two outs and Wade Trine was on first base he hit a soft liner down the right field line and I remember sitting in the dugout seeing it bounce fair and I I knew right away that Wade Trine was going to score from first cuz he oh, was fast bet. and there was two outs and yep. he was running on contact but then um, something I didn't expect happened, which was Greg Feld ended up circling the bases. And I, I can't remember. It seemed like the right fielder might have mishandled the ball de- and then threw it wild to second. Do you have memories of that play, Don? Because it's a little fuzzy for me. I know that Greg came around and scored, and we walked it off. Yeah, no, I don't. I do not remember that play at all, Joe. To be honest with you. Yeah, you probably remember the next game better, um, or maybe you just don't want to remember it. Uh, but that, <laughs> that was no. bizarre. Oh yeah, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, but that was uh, that was quite a tournament um, out there in Cup Bank, and I know it, that must have been hard because that was a really, really good team that you had. I know. Um, I remember pitching against uh, Wolf Point in the it was the divisional championship game on a Sunday, a hot I think it was in Glendive, and I had pitched the first game as a 15 year old um, against uh -huh. Glendive and won seven innings and got the win, and then this was two days later, and I was just dead and. I never had gotten hit so hard in my life. You know, every pitcher probably can remember their worst outing. Well, that was my worst oh, outing. Sure. Yeah, I think I went three innings, um, gave up, I mean, eight hits, two or eight runs. And Doc took me out in the middle of a count because I think Bill Newmiller had hit a, a home run to straightaway right. And then I think Jerry Moran was up. Those were both left-handed hitters. And I, yep. you know, my curveball broke into him, and I couldn't get my fastball by him. So, and then I think Jerry Moran hit a about a 370 foot shot, about a foot foul down the right foot line, and that's when Doc oh. walked out to the mound and said, "Okay, Joe, I think that's probably enough." Um, in the middle of a count, that was I'll never forget that. But I just remember what a a good hitting team that was. I know there were a lot of, uh, and then of course you had Dennis Lindorf as your ace, um, and Jerry Moran. Yeah. It was just a solid team all the way around. Um, never forget that team or that game or that tournament in Cut Bank. Right. Um, yep. That was yeah. that was one for the ages. Yes, it was. Um, and then when you came to Scob, so then you came to Scobie in '77 as the assistant coach. Uh, talk a little bit about that move, Don, and I think you had. Um, maybe married right about that time with Joanne, and that she was a she's yep. a Lindorf, right? That's quite a baseball name in Wolf Point, isn't it, Lindorf? I know. Yeah. Yeah. Go, yeah. Go ahead. Her dad. Her dad came from a family. Uh, uh, I believe he had eight brothers, or maybe nine. I, I wish she was here; she could straighten me out. But at any rate, <laughs> they had their own team. Pretty much, now I know every every little community had a team, and they farmed uh, just just north of Vida and a little bit uh, east. Uh, and anyway, uh, he actually uh, he was a pitcher. Well, I think he could play anywhere, but he actually had a uh, a shot of, of playing some pro baseball. But uh, being back back in those times when things were tough, uh, the kids stayed home and helped helped dad on the farm. While well, he wasn't a kid, he was in came back from the service basically and and uh had a chance to play more baseball but uh the the farm uh won that or his parents won that and he uh ended up uh, not not going and trying out mm -hmm. so but uh yeah so a lot of a lot of history in that a lot of baseball history Lindorf's and the Schillingers are, uh they're, well they're related through marriage as well and mm -hmm. and uh Schillinger is another great family, as you well know. And then in, um, so then why, why, what was uh, the move to Scobie then, Don? What was, uh, what, that was a new job for you then in Scobie, or? Yeah, well, uh, I, when we moved here, I was actually just going to help my Uncle Kenny farm. Oh, yeah. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so, as you remember, you know, at that time he had developed MS and needed yeah. a little physical help around, and I think Jimmy had been helping, or maybe at that time he had he was too young. But uh, Vernon Baldry had been helping on the farm, and then some other folks. And so anyway, that was the biggest reason I came back. Uh, uh, and then uh, we we kind of wanted to give Scobie a try anyway, and we ended up uh, living there a mile west of Four Buttes on the Osby place. And so then Joanne ended up getting the job, and then I I kind of got. Uh, I did everything I could to make money. I was uh, refereeing and trapping and coaching baseball and farming and, and anything else I could do. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it was actually a real good time in our life. We had a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, I sure I sure remember you as the assistant coach during those years gone from 77 on. And um, let me ask you as far as, you know, as an assistant coach for Doc, we'll talk about, you know, when you became head coach later. Uh, but what was sure. uh, some of your memories of Doc and, and maybe, you know, some of the things that you might have picked up from him, observing him as a head coach? Oh, sure. Uh, well, being, you know, when I, when I, I guess all during my, 
my career playing baseball and stuff. I was a baseball fanatic. Uh, I started even as a little kid uh, keeping book for like we'd listen to the Minnesota Twins on the radio TV. They weren't on TV yet, so I'd keep book for them, listen to the radio and, mm-hmm. and things like that. So I, when you do that all the time, you become aware of most of the rules and, and all the ins and outs of the game. So I, I always considered that I had a, a fair amount of baseball knowledge, you know, even, even before I started coaching. It. Mm-hmm. But I learned quite a bit from, from Harvey Longauger because he was also, and, and he and I were teammates on a couple of teams, so mm-hmm. plus not only good friends, but teammates as well. I learned some things from him because he played college ball for Rocky. He was their center fielder for mm-hmm. about three years. And uh, uh, and then coming up here with Doc, of course, right away, as soon as I got here, the first person I saw and the first person I talked to was Doc. I can't remember if he called me. I think he called me and told me to come over. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so you know, got to know he and he and March uh, a lot better. And and I would say, you know, there's I learned an awful lot from Doc. He just couldn't help it. But probably the biggest thing was on the pitching side. I learned more about pitching than I mm-hmm. than you know. In fact, I knew very little about pitching before I got here. So. Mm-hmm. Learned a lot about it after that, and it was it's, it was a real blessing to to be part of that. And uh, he and Marge were so good to Joanne and I, and and uh, yeah, we just became really good friends as well as being a, a mentor and a, another mom and dad figure. Marge and Doc were us, so that was that was super. So then, um, your head coaching career started, I think, in '83. Is that right, Don, with the Blues? I believe. Yeah. I believe so. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I know that was the later in that, in November of 83, I believe is when Doc passed. And I think you had the helm in 83. And I know, you know, I've going through the archives, I've, I've noticed some, some good teams that you had, you know, during those years through 91. I think you coached through 91. Is that right, Don? I think so. Yep. Yeah. Um, I don't remember exactly, but I think that's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know one of the things that caught my eye in the leader was, you know, the last year Scobie hosted the state tournament was in 1985. And uh, the Blues, your team had a really, really fine showing, taking third place. Um, The first game of that tournament, I wanted to ask you about that, your memories. It was against Haver. And Haver, the North Stars, were 41-3 and coming into that tournament. Uh which is an incredible yep. regular season record. I've Even the teams we had, we lost more games than that. Um, <laughs> and it went 16 innings. It, it, could you, do you have memories of that game, Don? Could you talk a little bit about that game? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, that, was, that was one of the, you know, I suppose three or four best games, you know, I think uh, a, a Blues team that I had been – been around helping coach or even watching that uh, the game the game was just super. Jimmy LaProuse uh, was just incredible. And Havers, you know, one through nine, they were like our our seventy seven to to eighty two teams. I mean, they didn't have a weak spot in the lineup. They could all hit. They were all quick. It seemed like they were they were you know all good fielders and they had good pitching, but. Uh, of course, Jimmy is one of those kids. It didn't matter how his arm was feeling; he'd go out and give you his best, and uh, he pitched, you know, fantastic. And the defense was good. Mm-hmm. And, and of course, he used up his whole tournament eligibility that first game, pretty much, unless we got into the fourth day. So, because yep. you only got twelve innings in three days yep. or three appearances. Yep. Yep. And then got Mike in there. Mike was just sixteen at that time, but he was really coming. And Mike uh, Rowland, and Mike he Rowland. pitched for. Mike Rowland, yep, yeah. mm-hmm. and he he finished her up, and that was quite a game. It went sixteen innings, um, five to four. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and uh, yeah, it was uh, a funny a funny part of that. After that game, uh, the Billings Cardinals were in the tournament, and yeah. their coach had been behind behind our bench that game, and he was always he was doing a little bit of talking to me. But after the game, he's uh, they had won their opening game, so that's who we were going to play the next day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he says to me, geez, you have to use all your pitching. Are you going to have anybody left for tomorrow? 
<laughs> I said, well, I guess we'll see. Mm -hmm. And so the next day we come out, well, I threw Mike again. Yeah. Uh, Roland. Yeah. And uh, he, he was just, he just picked up from the night before. And, and anyway, we 10 run them after seven. I don't remember the score. It was something like 13 to one. That's what it was. Or some yeah. darn thing. Yeah, yeah. Was it? Was. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And little uh, Steve Lapke, I remember him in the second or third inning. He comes up with the bases loaded, and he hits a grand slam over the right center field chance. Yeah. And it, it, just, it just steamrolled from there. So. Yeah. yeah but that was, that, was a, that was a fun game. Yeah, I, I saw. Yeah, Mike Rowland pitched a three-hitter. Um, in that game after throwing four innings the day before. So I think after the first yeah. two days, you had burned up your top two fit pitchers innings. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, but ended up taking third place, and I'm sure that was, you know, had a big part in that is you just ran out of pitching. <laughs> I mean, once you get past your top two pitchers, any Legion team's going to be, you know, is going to fall off, right? And But, but what an yeah. amazing showing that team had, uh, you know, in Scobie's last tournament that they hosted, you know, coming around to take yeah. place. And, and, and if, uh, yeah. if I remember right, I think we backed into that tournament uh, because we did, we, you know, you bit for the host the year before. I don't remember how that went. But the host automatically got in, and I think in the divisional tournament we actually took third or fourth, whatever it was. And yeah. anyway, but because we hosted, we got into the tournament. So I mean, it was it was a great showing, especially from that that point. Because I think we probably were, you know, a little bit over a 500 team that year, if I remember right. I mean, we we probably were like a 20 and 12 team or 20. I don't remember the the record again. You might have that, but um, so it was a we got up for that. We wanted to make a good showing, and the kids really really played well. Yes, they did, and uh, you know it's did the town of Scobie and Daniels County proud with the showing they had. I'm sure. Um, yeah, it was. They they didn't qualify um, in the tournament, but as host got in. But that's baseball for you, right, Don? I mean, once you yep. get in the playoffs, yep. you know you got a hot pitcher like Laprouse and Roll. I mean, you got you won two games, and you were one way a win from from getting into the championship game. So yeah. Yeah. That's yep. amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of going through the archive right now and it's uh it talks about the pitching but uh, but not how you scored uh not how you scored the winning run. Um but I'll I'll find that okay. in time for when um for when we wrap around and and put the video up. <laughs> but that was a fine team you had there, a fine showing in in Scobie that year and then I know you had some good teams in the late 80s. Oh, we should probably mention Larry Trangsrud caught all 16 innings, I believe, of that game. I know he mentioned that on on Facebook. Oh. And yeah, he must have yeah. called home yeah. after that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He was wore out, I'm sure of that. <laughs> yeah, 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 the peerless boy. And I know you coached Jeff Jones, I think, uh, later in the 80s. Yeah. And then... Uh, yeah, John Ray. Yeah, John Ray Richardson from Peerless and... And then Ken Meyer and Mike Lee uh, and Terry Farver, uh, those guys would have started playing in the late 80s. And I know that you had yeah. another, probably just looking at the records, uh, maybe the best team you had. I don't want to say that for you would have been 1990, yeah. 1990 team that took third at state. Again. I think I, so. Mm -hmm. You want to talk yep. a little bit about yep. that team, Don? And, uh, and the state tournament in Glendive, I know you had another fine pitching performance uh, by one of your pitchers yep. in that game. Yeah, yeah, Kevin Nelson that game. Mm -hmm. And, well, you know, Kevin and Mike Lee and and Kenny Meyer were, were and Terry Farmer were the old guys on that team, I think, uh, or the some of the main ones. And forgive me for, for, you know, I hate to mention any names because I forget so many. Yeah, There's yeah, been I so know, many I kids that, I know, yeah. that were were really good or great players for us and, and I appreciated all of them and all their hard work but yeah Kevin pitched a game uh, against Laurel uh, that again was an extra inning game and, and Kevin was a, a, another just a super awesome competitive player and uh, um, he, he, he 
pitched a heck of a game. Laurel again was favored to win that tournament. Mm -hmm. I don't remember if they did or if Vauxhall did. I don't recall for sure. I think Vauxhall did. Um, but at, at any rate, mm -hmm. um, do you do you remember who or do you have who won that tournament? Yeah, Vauxhall and Bitter and the Bitterroot Red Sox were the two teams that advanced. I think that's that right. Laurel got a win. You ran into that's a right. tough, and those were two really good teams. Yeah, but that. That Laurel game yeah. must have been something, I know, uh, because the sports oh, yeah. writer from Laurel said, you know, it was, or from Glendive, I think, said it was the best game that he'd ever seen in the state tournament. I think the Laurel newspaper said the same thing. Um, must have been quite yeah. a game against uh, against Laurel. Yeah, yeah, that was, uh, I think Kevin, uh, I think he struck out like 16 uh, and again, you know, Laurel was a good team. That was when they were just getting started with good teams. And uh, our, our defense played well. I think now that one, I think I remember Terry Farmer scoring on a sack fly from third base to win that one, if I remember right. Yeah. Um, and I may not. <laughs> yeah, I know <laughs> That's there what was I a think sack I fly. <laughs> um, I know there was a sack fly, and I know Ken Meyer, um, I think what. So you you got you got a base runner on second, um, and then you bunted him to third, um, and then um, I think got him home on a sack fly. Yep. Yeah. 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 That's what I remember. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I think. So, and I had actually. Play. Yeah. I was going to say I'd actually missed. We had a chance to win uh, an inning or two before that. We had a runner on third with two out, and there was a pass ball. And uh, it actually went to the fence, but it was directly in line with me. You know, it went from my direct line right to the fence, and I never saw it. I didn't even know it was a pass ball, and all of a sudden the catcher's busting his tail back there, and oh. we had a guy on third, and, and I just I couldn't see it. I didn't know where the ball was, so yeah, obviously yeah. I couldn't send him if I didn't know where the ball no, was. No, no, I felt pretty bad after that, after knowing that. Well, it's good that it turned out the way it did, or you probably would have never been able to. But that's tough to see, you know. Forget it. it. <laughs> no, so yeah, what it was so? How, here's how you won it. Um, so Ken Meyer reached on a walk. He moved to second on a pass ball and was bunted to third, and then he scored on a sack fly from Terry Farmer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's how that. Yeah. And and Nelson had 19 strikeouts. Oh, 19, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, he was, yeah. he was, he was just throwing, you know, fastballs and sliders and they were, they were working. Yeah, that must have been quite a game. I think Larry Trangard was umpiring that game because I know he mentioned, you know, the pitching on both sides was really good, a, a great pitcher's duel. Yep. And, and then just running into a couple really good teams there in Vauxhall and Bitterwood. And I think, I think they ended up going 1-2 in the regional. Um, after that, um, Vauxhall, Alberta, and Bitterroot. I think they went one, two in the regional. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. No, they were both. They were both really good teams. Yeah. 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 So, and then, um, then your next year in um, '91, I think, would have been your last year, Don. Is that right? You coached the following year when I think you did make it to state again that year, right? Yep, I believe so. That was would have been uh, that was kind of a strange. Well, in the in the divisional tournament, if I remember this correctly, we played Glendive for the championship, and we had lost the game. I can't remember who we lost to, but anyway, we came through the back door, and then we ended up playing Glendive. And for some reason, we only played one championship game because Glendive was undefeated, so we had had to beat them twice. But for whatever reason that year, whoever won that first game. Uh, was the divisional champion, and uh, we I think Ryan Linder pitched a heck of a game that that day, and we ended up uh, winning by a run or two. I don't remember exactly what the score was, but and, and help me if I'm not quite right there. Yeah, don't have. Let's see the divisional. Um, I'll find it in time for um, you know for the when we do the video. But yeah, sure. Um, Glendive and let's see, Glendive was in the A. That the tournament was at Mile City, 
and yep. um, looking, yeah, Great Falls. Well, a 13 to 12 game, Great Falls, that would have probably been maybe the Sparkies or the Vigilantes would have eliminated you. I think um, 13 to 12, at least that's what I'm showing here. And Glendive, Glendive, yeah, Glendive was the other team from the East to make it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at the state tournament, that is, yeah. Yep. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, at the state, I don't, I don't think. Yeah, you know, I think we just played two games that year because mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Linder couldn't pitch. I mean, his his arm was all done after that divisional game. Well, and we only had a couple of days before it uh, was. Uh, that seems like that state tournament might have even started a day or two early for some reason. I don't mm -hmm. remember for sure. Mm -hmm. But at any rate, I just know that we didn't have Ryan for the for the state. Uh, and we, yeah, we ended. I think we played bitter at the first game, and I think I started Steve Stevenson, mm -hmm. one of the Stevenson boys, anyway. And he had a good first inning, and after that, they they were hitting the ball. Yeah, I saw that. Um, yeah, that was a fourteen to nothing game. That first game at state. Yeah. Yeah, Bitterroot. You know, and boy, when did they come along? Because I know they have won a lot of state championships, and they, you know, yeah. they must have. Um, you know, I think it's near Hamilton is where they play out there yep. in, near Missoula. Did did you ever go out there and play? They must have really a really good program. Nope. Yeah. Yeah, they they got they became really good and again, this is just about it, like the late eighties and early nineties and they've been good ever since. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um just just a really good program out there. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And Laurel, those teams you've played, Laurel as well has a really good program. I think they might have as many state championships yep. as Scobie does now. The the Dodgers, um, Scobie, yep. you know, played them all the way back in 1959. Doc's first year at, at uh, Scobie, they played Laurel in the for the Eastern Championship. Scobie played Laurel, so you know that those and we played Laurel for the state championship in '79. You might remember that. At Scobie, that's who we I beat. remember a little bit. Yeah, that's who we beat for the championship. Yep, yeah, was Laurel. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so then um, in '91, then um, you decided to uh, to move on from coaching. I know you have a couple boys. Maybe they were involved in sports, but what why we, what was your decision to move on from coaching, Don? Well, there it was a couple of them. Family was one. Yeah, the the boys were, were getting older and being involved in everything. And, and then I had uh, other job opportunities uh, uh, that came along. Um, that was about the time I opened my, in 91, I opened my own business uh, insurance agency. So that required a lot more time since I was the, I started out as a one man shop. And as time went on, I hired other people. But at any rate, yeah, I had to, had to start uh, re making money and, and, uh, uh, working hard for the family so that and I, I i hated to quit coaching baseball but it was just getting there were just it would just be too much and take too much time away from the family and the job so yeah i um, retired <laughs> yeah well what a what an amazing career you had don as a player and coach in wolf point and scoby um I know that I, I, I certainly remember you as the assistant coach and what a great team you and Doc were. Um, and, you know, how, you know, as a, as a kid at that time, you know, when I coached later on is, you know, for my, for my girls in fast pitch, you know, I wasn't really aware of how much time and effort it took to do that, that adults have jobs, they're working, they, <laughs> they have a life outside of baseball and really, appreciate Don your you know the coaching that you did and um you know for Scobie and thank you for that because I took it for granted kind of at the time and and now that I'm a little older I I just realized you know the American Legion program itself all the volunteers in Scobie um the field yep. how those all those volunteers need to take care of the field and organizing the tournaments and everything um, there's so much that it takes to give us the opportunity to play and really appreciate it. And you were, you and Doc were a great team together. I remember that. And, uh, I know Ray Chapman said that your sense of humor kept things light 
Um, you know, because, you know, Doc, he could be stern at times, but of course he was always pretty loosey-goosey too. But um, yeah, you were a great team. You were a great team. And so just wanted to say thanks, Don, for your for the time that you coached. I mean, it was, it was, I have so many great memories of those teams and those games. And yes, I do remember listening to the Twins uh, during practice. Sometimes the radio would be on and they'd score a run and you'd be out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This would have been the late seventies. Yeah. 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 Well, thanks. Uh, thanks for the kind words, Joe. And uh, I, uh, I had such a great time coaching well, all the kids that, that were involved in, in Wolf Point and Scobie baseball. Mm-hmm. And uh, for the most part, uh, they were all great kids. They worked, they all worked hard. And that, that's what it's all about. Trying to, trying to get a work, work ethic going and and uh may, may, maybe have a lot of fun while we're doing it mm-hmm. and that's mm-hmm. those are the those are the two keys some life lessons but have fun doing it yeah absolutely yeah all the memories that we have and you know let's um i'm really glad i got to talk to you don because um i think a lot of people on on facebook were wondering if joe was ever going to get out of the 1960s right um with my interview <laughs> But there was a lot that came after that, and you know, you take us up to 1991. Oh. So, and and those teams were, you know, in the late 70s. I know we had some good teams, and um, it was just great having you be a, a part of that, and Doc, and then picking up the the baton after he left us. So, with those great teams, um, did I miss anything, Don? Was there a question that I? Um, I didn't ask you that you wish I would have or anything else that you'd like to add? Mm, no, not not really. I think we covered covered mm-hmm. most of it. And like mm-hmm. I say, it's uh, my memory's not the best, but uh, mm-hmm. I sure appreciate the opportunity to, to visit with you and, and bring back some more memories as well. So mm-hmm. I, I thank you for that. Oh, uh, you're welcome, Don. I'm having so much fun with this because... Um, you know, I'm learning so much. Like I said, you know, I didn't know your backstory in, in Wolf Point. I mean, I remember playing Little League in Wolf Point in um, 1970. So you would have been, that would have been after your Legion career. But Ron Harshark was coaching. Yeah. And there were two Little League teams, Food Town and Buttries. And Dad took us down there to play a double header against them. Mike Neubauer was playing. He was pitching and Kip. And uh, sure. you know, some of those other players, and that was a big deal going down to Wolf Point to play. Uh, you know, we had played, you know, Opime and Scoby and Flaxville and stuff. But I remember how excited and nervous we were to go down to Wolf Point because we just always had associated it with being a really good baseball town, you know. And uh, we got a split. We got a split that day. Uh, we lost to Food Town. Kip scored the winning run. I remember this, which, which is kind of sad, I suppose. But on, I was pitching, and yeah, we were ahead five to four, and then they walked it off. Neubauer hit one to the wall, uh, which he did the same thing at the state tournament in 1976. Um, in the in the last game, he hit a three-run triple off me when Doc brought me in. Um, so he kind of owned me his whole career. I kind of joke with him about that. <laughs> Oh, that's good. So it's funny, yeah, Mike, yeah. Was a, yeah. Mike was a real good player. Yeah, and he coached later on himself in 87, the, the second it, state championship just, team that Wolf he was a, had. Yeah, 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 he was. They, he coached some really good teams, too. Yeah, yeah. Mike was a mm-hmm. good player, a good coach, and yeah. then he went on and he coached a lot of state championship softball in oh, Belgrade. Yeah. He had girls playing softball, so, yeah. yeah. I played against him in college, believe it or not, and Black Hill State. He was at Black Hill State, and I was at Minot State, and we went south for um, some games. I guess wherever Black Hill State is is considered south from Minot, North Dakota. This was in the spring, um, but we had a okay. yeah. He was catching, and it was good to see him there on the diamond in South Dakota. I remember it very well. He was catching. I was playing shortstop for Minot. Yeah, but sure. Yeah. So um, great memories, Don, and I'm really happy that I had this opportunity to, to talk to you. And uh, thanks again for for your uh, you know your contribution to Scobie baseball. And I got to say Wolf Point too because 
I know the book's going to be, you know, emphasizing Daniels County and, and Scobie, but, you know, those other teams playing mm -hmm. Wood Wolf Point up there, Glasgow, in northeastern Montana, um, had some really good teams as well, and I'm glad we got to talk a little bit about those today too, Don. Yep, me too, and uh, uh, it's it's really going to be be fun when, when you get this project done. I'm, I'm really interested in in reading the book and I thank you for putting in all the time to to put all this history together I, I mean it's a it's a it's a big big uh, <laughs> big deal it takes a lot of your time and, and I know it's fun but yeah. it's still we sure appreciate you putting together well the history will be in writing thanks Don um, I appreciate that I feel like um, you know kind of you know a, a, a little bit of pressure because I want to I want to make sure I do justice to you know the memory um, these interviews are certainly helping because uh, um, but yeah you're right it's a labor of love I, I don't consider this work at all yeah and it's it, it's it's a lot of fun it'll be a lot of work but a lot of fun too hey Don it's been great talking with you and uh, my best to Joanne and, and the kids your boys uh um, I know one of them played. Did they both play baseball in Legion, Don, or just just one? Or do you um, Morgan just Morgan played when he was sixteen, but he decided he would rather get a job, and mm -hmm. so he, mm -hmm. he he asked me if he could get a job instead of play baseball. I said, "You do what you want to do." Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, Jet Jet played all three years, and he, he he was a good player, and now he coaches uh, well girls basketball and then little league baseball he's been coaching little league baseball for i don't know how many years 15 or so and yeah his his last little one is 10 in fact we just got back from the state nine and ten year old tournament which was in plentywood this year and the the big muddy which is plentywood scobie culbertson and medicine lake uh we lost in the championship game to bozeman oh. so we had a had a had a good year the little kids had a good year that's awesome. Passing it on, you boys are, that's awesome. I know there was a Lechfeld, I don't know if it was Morgan or Jed, that pitched in the last state tournament Scobie played in in 1997. They got some innings. Yeah, in that would have been Jed. Jed, yeah, 97. Yeah. So, you know, that was the last year Scobie made it to state, so I think it's appropriate that, you know, one of your sons was on that team. I know, um, <laughs> Dan, no, seriously, Danny Wolf's um, son was on that team and uh, Rocky Wares, so... You know, all those great yeah, yeah. great names in Scobie baseball were on that last team. I think that's awesome. So, yeah, 1997, yep. I noticed that. Yeah, okay. All right, Don, well, I'll Perfect. let you go. It's been awesome talking to you. And, um, uh, you know, I look forward to more Facebook posts. I might have some other questions for you, you know, as we go forward. And uh, sure. I hope I do. So thanks so much, Don. It's been great talking with you. Yep, same here, Joe. Thanks again, and take care, and uh, uh, hopefully we'll get to talk again. Uh, maybe we don't have to wait so long. We don't have to wait 40 years or whatever it's been. <laughs> I hope so, too, Don. I don't think we're going to. Thanks, Don. It's been great. Talk to you okay. later. Yep, thanks. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.